So why should any of us bother with poetry, reading it, writing it, whatever we do? Why should we bother with that? Well, we're going to jump right into the new year with that question. Uh, this is the first edition of the 2024 season of Poetry, Passion and Pleasure podcast with your host, Dale Byron. And uh, we're going to jump right in with a poem by Brian Doyle. And uh, it is called, Why Do You Bother to Write Poems? Brian Doyle. And it goes like this. Why do you bother to write poems? Is the question, is the question from the back of the room, I cannot quite see the student asking it. But it's deep-voiced and challenging, and I assume it's a guy. Because I want to rub music and language together and gawk at the flames, I say. Because I want to rub music and language together and gawk at the flames, I say. Because poetry, because poetry, if it takes fire, cracks people's masks and assaults arrogance and sucks you beneath the surface of words towards why we use them, towards why we use them. Because, because we have been singing before there were words, and it's healthy to remember that. Because the great poems are about you and me both. Because the great poems are about you and me both. And there is damn little we will be able to discuss in the normal flow of the river and it's good for both of us to stand together quietly for a while in a poem. Because why the hell not? Because why the hell not? What is it exactly? What is it exactly that we should count as time better spent? You cannot spare two minutes for a poem. Sure, sure, it might be pompous, arty muck, and you demand your two minutes back. But what if it isn't? But what if it isn't? What if it shivers you? What if it shivers you or startles you awake or makes you weep, remembering a time when you sang all day too? And everything was made, and everything was made of music and light and colors and slabs of shimmer. What if, brother, what if, brother, that's my answer to your question? Um, well, there's a lot in that poem. There's a lot in that poem, and there's a lot in that poem that I fell in love with when I first heard it uh, some years ago. But I think one of the things um, about poetry is why we bother is because they tend poems, a good poem, can fly underneath with that special language, the radar screen of our strategic mind, and go directly to the heart. Um you know, the poet, the protagonist in this poem, because poetry, if it takes fire, cracks people's masks and assaults arrogance. Now, all of us, I think, become arrogant, not, not always in, you know, some classical sense, but we become arrogant in the sense that we get certain about everything or certain about our opinions, certain about being right. And a poem has this wonderful way of being able often to break through that, to break through that certainty and to give us that little <gasps> of insight, that little bit of fresh perspective, that new idea, and maybe most importantly, that new feeling, that new feeling that we need, that new healing that we need. 
that new, um, yes, just that, that sense that someone else outside of our own thinking and outside of our own head can say something so clear that we fall in love with the words that we, that we go, um, that we recognize that they have been able to say something that we have been waiting our entire lives to hear. And that just in this moment, we need to hear it. We need to hear it. You know, um, in this first, again, this first edition of the podcast in 2024, um, I think, and we'll, we'll, we're going to talk about that this year, um, that, that poems uh, are not something rarefied or fancy. They really aren't. Again, they, there may be complex ideas and complex emotions that, and we need the poem to be able to help us work with that com, complex emotions around loss, for example, and grieving. But the reason that we go for the poem, the reason that we seek that kind of language is often very simple because we simply need to feel differently. We simply need to have a fresh perspective because in the echo chamber of our own mind, our own monkey mind, as the Buddhists say, we can often get attached to some stories and ideas that are not very helpful. Have you noticed? And I love the way the protagonist says, you cannot spare two minutes for a poem? <laughs> sure, it might be pompous, arty muck, and you demand your two minutes back. But what if it isn't? He's saying to this question, why do you bother to write poems? But what if the poem is special? What if the poem grabs your attention? You know, I often say that a poem it's are, are any words that have us stop, pay attention, and really uh, imagine something different. Um, it, it might be arty, arty muck, and you demand your two minutes back. But what if it isn't? What if it shivers you or startles you awake or makes you weep remembering a time when you sang all day too? And everything, and everything was made of music and light and colors and slabs of shimmer. What if, brother, what if, brother, that's my answer to your question? What if, brother, that's my answer to your question? Well, I love that poem, and uh, Brian Doyle, Doyle um, uh, died in 2017 and was actually a friend of a friend of mine. Uh, he was a friend of Kim Stafford, who's an amazing uh, writer, amazing human being, uh, the son of William Stafford, whose work I love. Uh, but Kim and Brian were uh, friends, and I heard from Kim that Brian was an amazing, well, he was an amazing writer, just if you see the work that he did, but that he was also an amazing human being as well. So uh, uh, what if, brother, that's my answer to your question. Thank you so much for your listening ear. Welcome to 2024. Happy New Year. And uh, until next time and next poems, please, please take good care of yourself. And if you can, take good care of someone else.